Yeah. All right, waiver wired. We start with the wide receivers. There are no buys Overcoming this adversity. Week. No, no one believed in me. You are a true underdog. <laughs> Thank on this you. Show. It's a yes. true underdog story. Yeah, you wow. represent the little people. Yes. I do. I really <laughs> do. Let less the city bury over here. No, Unbelievable. That's right. What a what a story. <laughs> All right, waiver wired. Wide receivers. Once again, no buys this week. Juwan is there Jennings. Anything, is there anything in my in our league more annoying than losing to me? And losing me like on I play you. Play. I play you this week, and I think I'm just gonna opt out of my like, communications uh, for a couple actually, days. I actually, I wouldn't know because I beat you. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Wow. I would imagine that's fair. It's a good call. That's well done. That's well played. Fair enough. Fair enough. Anyway, fantasy football happy hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Happy Hour. Connor Rogers, Matthew Barry, Lawrence Jackson yeah. in the house because it is Wednesday. Jump sour on in. Sour news for you. I just got sour news for you because you know what? You know what? You know what this is? This is a burner phone. So like, just even though you're opting out of the group chat, oh, oh yeah, I'm still blowing your stuff up <laughs> all week long. That's smooth. Yeah, That's absolutely. Smooth. It's, it's interesting. Lawrence's phone is gone. Yeah. I wonder what I number I'll have to also <laughs> block. I'm just telling. Just you. everybody. Something to I'll, think about. I'll no allies here at NBC <laughs> anymore. Besides Big Show. Mm -mm. All right. Well, listen. You did a lot of complaining during this week, and that's fine. It's part of my charm. It's on brand. 100. percent It's very on brand Indeed. for you, and we appreciate that about you. I'll tell you, someone who actually should be complaining a little bit, has been caught in by the bad luck bug, mm. is Lawrence Jackson. Sure. You got to see what's going on with Lawrence Jackson yeah. in the League of Assholes right yeah. now. It seems like he yeah, runs yeah. into the peak asshole every single week at this point. This is Lawrence's... Yeah, yeah go ahead, Lawrence. Man, uh, Walk us through this disaster. It's tough here. I actually ended up losing this by less than a point because that last <laughs> Lamar touchdown put me by, down by .99. The interesting thing about this is... I lose to Denny, who's by points wise is the worst team in the league. Yeah. Prior to that, the last two weeks, I beat Matthew. I beat Jay, who are the two highest scoring teams right. in the league. Interestingly enough, there was no highlight of my matchups in those two weeks. Yeah, absolutely right. But, but the you mainstream know, media does not want <laughs> no, the mainstream that. media don't want you to know that uh, you know I was able to take down the two top teams in points, but. You know, that that's fantasy. That's how it goes. Uh, I wish Lamar could have given me six touchdowns. It, hey, you know what? He did his part. He, 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 nah, I guess he didn't do enough, right? <laughs> he had six touchdowns I needed, but, you know, uh, good luck to Denny, who has the same record as me, but 120 points less. That, that friends. That's the analytics. That that's is the, the analytics. That's the analytics. That is fantasy football right there. There you go. And That's what the mainstream media doesn't want you to know. That This is the life we've chosen. Matter of fact, before mm -hmm. uh, Matthew took my phone and let it uh, be posed as a burner. That is your phone. <laughs> I was actually looking up, you know, the points for in our league. I'm sorry, the points against. And lo and behold, I'm, I'm ranked number one in that category. But I got faith, though, because the cream always rises at least near to the top. All so right. we'll see we'll what see. happens. Well, yeah, we will see what happens. Well, All right. Let's us, get sick, football. us sickos have loved it so much that we are going to be doing a Fantasy Hoops League of Assholes edition. We're going to determine the draft order live on the show yes. later for that. But we got a lot yep. to talk about okay. with Fantasy Football right now. It is start sit day for us. We're talking Dak, Jordan Mason, Marvin Harrison Jr., and more wide receivers on the move. We're going to break down the impact of DeAndre Hopkins going to the Chiefs, which is great for DeAndre Hopkins. He's yeah. got to be feeling good, uh, and we'll have the latest through all our Roto World Player news. So let's jump right in to keep it open or close it out. And I'll tell you who uh, might want to close. Because we're in a bar. I don't know if people are aware of the segment. I have no the, idea. The, the premise yeah. of year it. Three. Right? You know, year you three. Yeah, 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 of course. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, we're in a bar. Yeah, yeah. Well, are we going to keep the tab open or close it out with some of these players? I'll tell you That's who the should, premise. I'll tell you who should close it out, maybe, uh, on yeah. speaking in general right now. It's not been great for Jerry Jones. But Jerry yeah. Jones does speak every week, and we got to hear him talk about the trade deadline for his beloved Dallas Cowboys. We made the decision of how we're going forward. Uh, when I extended DAC and when I signed CD. And so uh, uh, that should have and does put you in a direction uh, that you're going. So that if you see us moving in any way by chance during this trade deadline, trading somebody, uh, that would be because that we are going in a different direction. That is Jerry Jones on 105.3, the fan doing his weekly appearance. And we do start with Dak Prescott. Who? I think it's 103.5. You said 105.3. I don't think what a, right? Isn't that 103.5? No. 
Am I? No? It's 105 3. Is it? All right. That's well, what it said on the top the left. Okay, fair enough. Understood. Yeah. All I know is, whatever station it is, it's <laughs> freaking amazing that Jerry Jones keeps going on 105 3. 105 3. All right, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Once in a while, I get wait, one right. Wait, wait, 105 3, so who was right? Me. Oh, Jay yes. Connor was right. right. Yes. Connor right. was right. The host of the show is driving fair the enough. show once in a while. It's all right. Every once in a while. You're just keeping me on my toes. And you I know try what? To. I appreciate that, especially with Jay out, Lawrence in. Lawrence oh trusts me a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. So we, yeah, we start with Dak Prescott, who, yeah. I mean, this week, Matthew, he barely sneaks into your top 20 quarterbacks. Uh, so he's on the road this, this week, obviously. It's at San Francisco. It's the Sunday night game on NBC and Peacock. I'm a company man. And on the road this year, it's, he's played three games. He's been under 17 points in all three. He's averaging under 15 fantasy points on the road overall. He plays the Niners. And five of the seven quarterbacks, for all the struggles that San Francisco has had this year, there have been pretty good defense, right? Five of the seven quarterbacks that have faced the 49ers have had under 13 fantasy points. That includes fantasy quarterbacks such as Patrick Mahomes, Geno Smith, Aaron Rodgers, Matthew Stafford, all of whom are as good, if not better, than Dak Prescott, who, as you see, is just QB 16 on the season, barely ahead of Bo Nix, who defeated Lawrence Jackson just last week. Yes. Uh, he, he did indeed. <laughs> By the way, the Niners have allowed just one or fewer touchdown passes in five straight games. And just contextually, you think about the Niners and Dak. Dak feels like he always struggles against the Niners. Last week, it was the last year, it was the big game in the middle of the season, the playoffs the year before that. And I think you could make an argument, guys, that the Cowboys teams last year and the playoff team two years ago was a lot better offensively than what the Cowboys are rolling out right now. Yeah. Um... I, I, I'm closing it out, and I, just to play along with the premise, I'm closing it out. On Dak Prescott this here week. Here at the He's bar? QB 19. Here at the bar. At the, nice. Where at, you at have the choice bar. to keep a bar tab open or close it out. I'm, in fact, closing it out. Okay. It's tough. Uh, the 49ers defense have intercepted the quarterback in four straight games. Mm -hmm. Two straight games. They've gotten two picks on the quarterback. That includes Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes ran for 39 yards in a rushing touchdown. And like you said, Matthew, he still only had 13, 14 fantasy points. So, is Dak going to give you that? I don't think so. Uh, I'm, I'm going to close it out as well. They just don't have enough all around uh, on the offense in the run game. So, and again, that hasn't been good fantasy wise this season period. So to go on the road against this Niners team, you can't have much confidence in that. I'm, I'm going to close it out for this week. Both closing it out here, and we stay in the same game, Lawrence, with Jordan Mason against the Cowboys. Three straight games under 10 fantasy points for Jordan Mason. We know McCaffrey's looming. But Mason will get the start once again. Can you keep riding with this? So they say. Up? We'll see. Yeah. You're yeah, you're I, really not letting this one go. I just, you know. That, that why, why would you? I mean, I think yeah. it's probably more likely than not that Mason gets the start. But, like, yeah. like they don't have a strong rack track record of being it's, honest it's about injuries this, this year. year. That, Let's that just that leave it at that. It'll be true, very kind. That is especially after this season. Um, look, Jordan Mason, actually, he's run good the past three games. His problem is this is why he hasn't had 10 fantasy points. He hasn't scored in three games, but Dallas Cowboys, here we go. They've allowed the third most rushing touchdowns to running back with eight this season. So this is the game he should be able to get back in the end zone. Again, he's had game, his last three games, 89 rushing yards, 73, 58. You put a touchdown with those, he's still there as a top 10 running back. So against this Dallas defense, I'm, I'm going to leave it open. Only one team in the NFL has allowed more rushing touchdowns this year than the Dallas Cowboys as well. No running back has more red zone rush attempts than Jordan Mason, right? He, he's actually second in goal line rush attempts as well. So we like his chances to get into the end zone for those of you who like to bet anytime touchdowns uh, for Jordan Mason. And coming off the injury last week, would he be hurt? You know, would he be uh, limited by the shoulder? He was not. There were 19 running back touches. Jordan Mason got 16 of them. He played 86% of the snaps. So in a must-win game, honestly, for both teams, it's actually a great game. Oh, but a yeah. uh, most must-win game for both teams, uh, I think Jordan Mason, especially given the fact that Brandon Ayuk is out, we don't know if we're going to get Debo back. Kittle's a little bit banged up as well. Feels like they lean on the run game, especially given the matchup and 
what other options they have on offense in this one. As you see, RB15 for Matthew, that is a keep it open for both these yes, guys Sorry, here. Yes. Our next running back, it's all right. Tyrone Tracy mm. Jr. against the Steelers, Matthew. I like that you're, you're in a Rangers jersey, and you've just completely, you're like, you know what? Turn the page. Jets, I'm done. Yeah, I'm done with okay. the Jets. <laughs> Mets, the season's Mets are over. Yeah. Mets, the season over. I'm, back. I'm now on the Rangers bandwagon. Yeah, they haven't lost in regulation yet. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> we just turned the page it's here. Fantastic. It's fantastic. It's, 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 it's amazing. I had a Knicks jersey on yesterday. They got absolutely clobbered in the opener. Yeah. We're just, we just You'd have been, you would be safe yeah. with a Liberty jersey. I know. You should, yeah. you I should gotta rock a Liberty that. jersey. I, you should watch, rock a Liberty jersey, and then, you know, you're safe until – you know, opening game next year. But it would ruin my reputation. No one can call me a front runner with the teams I root for. This is true. So, yeah. but there's also other names we can call you. I'm like, if you're just doing this to avoid name calling, like you've, we've got plenty of names. That's to, fine. I just don't want to be called a front runner. Fair I'll enough. deal with anything else. Fair enough. You're not like Jay Croucher. Jay Croucher is. <laughs> he uh, latches uh, on to wherever yeah. his futures <laughs> bets are. Oh, Shameless. Love of God. Giants 80 to one. That we haven't heard of the Giants oh, name on the show gonna, in weeks. My my wife who like pays attention to nothing. My wife literally the other day <laughs> said to me, she goes, "How's Jay's Giants bet coming?" And I'm like, in a serious yeah, manner. In a serious yeah, manner. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's, you should it's be like coming it's going, along. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're it's probably coming. 120 to one. Well, because now. my wife, my wife likes the Giants are her team, and you know, and she knows that it just hasn't gone the way that anyone would have hoped in New York for them. Uh, unbelievable. Yeah. Well, speaking of the Giants, Tyrone yeah. Tracy. Tyrone Tracy. There he, you go. It he's all He's on our back. list here. Yeah. Nine touches last week in his first game with Devin Singletary back, Matthew. The good news is the pass game work was there. Mm -hmm. The bad news is this offense stunk, and now he's not the only running back. And that's the point. You and I both love Tyrone Tracy. Absolutely worth keeping on your roster. But I'm closing it out for this week on the road at Pittsburgh. Steelers are top 10 in the fewest fantasy points allowed to opposing running backs. Giants have the lowest impl implied team total this week as well. And so despite the fact that Tyrone Tracy, as you see it there on your screen, played 67% of the snaps compared with just 22% for Devin Singletary. I just don't know that this offense is good enough to support two running backs, fantasy-wise, especially in a tough matchup against the Steelers. I, if I, I would, because I believe in Tr Tracy's talent, you know, I think it's worth hanging on to in case he just completely takes the job over from Singletary or Singletary gets hurt again. But for this week, I'm closing it out, uh, Lawrence, on Tyrone Tracy, you know, um, Steal up, hurt down. <laughs> Another yeah. issue, Lawrence. They don't have a left tackle right now. Literally, that's that's huge, Connor. Um, then you look at the fact that this over under. You see Belichick throwing shade the other day. Like he's that, on a that tear right just now. Like, yeah, he, oh, like, let Saquon go. Give him a tackle. Yeah. The guy didn't even there anymore. Like he just like beefing with Gerard Mayo. Yeah, clearly. You know what? Hey, good for Bill Belichick. Yeah, it's he's fun. Good Be old him. and angry. That's <laughs> fine. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, he's, he's earned it. You're old, but you're not angry. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. We'll get, yeah, no, it, get there. It, it, it's well, levels to this. It's steps to that. Yeah, too. You, get, to you get to the point where you just start saying anything you want. Like yes. you don't care no more. <laughs> I, I'm, my next contract with NBC, that's where I'll be. <laughs> like I gotta, angry, yeah. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, like you know, toe the line for <laughs> right. one more deal, yes, and yes. then, then it's just you know, then I'm off the rails. The retirement and, deal. Oh, okay, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the like, Go yeah, out on top. Yeah, the, yeah, uh, the zero uh, F's to give deal. Uh, yeah, exactly. Quick for me, I'm gonna close it out on Tyrone Tracy too. Like you said, the John. Giants offense isn't good enough to you for you to feel confident starting anyone outside of Malik Neighbors and maybe Wondell Robinson. Then the fact that you're going up against the third best run defense uh, in the Pittsburgh Steelers. They held Brees Hall to under 40 rushing yards last week. So, you know, just knowing that uh, Tracy and Singletary are going to be splitting time, no, no thank you. Uh, I'm closing it out. A close for Tyrone Tracy. The next one, guys. Yes, Matthew? I just want to say, like, I was reading some of the YouTube comments last oh, night. Dangerous really, place to be. Dangerous place to be. Honestly, our YouTube audience is actually pretty great. They're, you know, a, lot of, they're, they're a lot of fun. They're a lot, they're a yeah. lot of fun. They go back and forth with each other. Uh, they give me crap, you crap, it's Lawrence, great. Jay, yeah, yeah, yeah. all of it. But there was one guy, and I, I wish I'd made a note of what, what, the comment, what the commenter's name was. But the person said, oh, Barry. Barry with the, 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 the paper shuffling and the pencil tapping and the cups, everything <laughs> is the most annoying thing in the world. It just drives me absolutely crazy. So for you, <laughs> this is for you, buddy. Yeah, you, this you, is for you. You, you, you know what? This is for Matthew, you. Matthew, uh, about a month ago when we was talking about the YouTube comments, I went in there about a month ago and they talk about your pen tapping. It is kind of wild right there. They actually talk about how I talk. Right. Y'all people don't like how I talk. <laughs> Well, guess what? I'm going to still be here yeah, anyway. Yeah, so. yeah, that's a good point. I'll try to cut down on the pencil tapping. And I'm the, not going to uh, cut the paper down on how talking. I talk. But I like, I like it. It's a, it's, a, it's a little, it's a, 
Nah, Matthew, What's you the, do. I won't call it a crutch, but it, yeah, it is it's a little bit a of a crutch. crutch. It's, oh, it's a th- I was that's yeah. the word I was looking for. It's a physical crutch. It is absolutely just a. It helps me sort of reset into whatever that we're talking nah, about. Man, next. You, you do you, dog. Thank you, you do Lawrence. You. I appreciate it. Yeah. You can talk how you want. Yeah, that's right. There Atlanta G8, baby. This is how we sound. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's talk about Marvin Harrison Jr. He's sure. got the Dolphins, Lawrence. I cannot believe yeah. we are having a keep it open or close it out combo around the talent that is Marvin Harrison Jr., but it's justified right now. Where do you stand with him going into week number eight? Yeah, definitely. Well, the good things you like, week seven, 23% target share. He's getting a 20 – he's had a 23 or better percent target share in the last three games. The The problem here is it's not a – it's a bottom eight passing offense in the league. Kyler Murray's averaging under 200 passing yards per game. Um, so it, there's problems with them connecting, maybe some separation on Har- uh, Harrison Jr.'s part. And then you got the fact that Miami has the number one pass defense in the NFL by far, actually. They've only allowed two receiving touchdowns this year to receivers and only eight and a half receptions per game to receivers. Not like one receiver, all receivers per game. Like, that's a scary number, actually. So... You know, despite him being the Cardinals' number one wide receiver versus this defense, I have to close it out uh, until, you know, we see more consistency. He started to come along a few weeks back, uh, give him grace because he left the game in week six. But, uh, you know, it's gotten to be uh, consistently like, you know, low production. So, need to see a little something. So, I'm closing it out. Listen, I get, I get it, Lawrence, right? He hasn't seen an end zone target since week four. He's had under 50 receiving yards in five of his seven games this year. Yes, he left the one game early as well, and you saw the graphic there on your screen. It just, for whatever reason, him and Kyler Murray aren't on the same page. Only 55% of his targets this year have been deemed catchable, Connor. Mm. Having said all that, you see it right there. You see it right there on your screen, whereas opposed to Dorch, Wilson, and McBride, all 76% or higher in terms of catchable targets. Like, and to the eye test, Kyler Murray's played fine. Like, he's he's had some throws I think he'd, he'd want back. He's done enough. He's done enough. It's just whatever reason, him and Marvin Harrison Jr. are not on the same page. Having said all that, having said all that, I'm still keeping it open on Marvin Harrison. Now, listen, barely, right? He's my wide receiver 27, so he's barely a wide receiver 3 for me this week. But – Ayuk and Debo and Godwin and Mike Evans and it's just like there's just so many wide receivers that are beat up or banged up we don't know if Cooper Cup is coming back this week it's just I don't know that too many people are gonna have the luxury of saying you know what I've got Marvin Harrison he's obviously somebody I drafted in the first couple of rounds of my draft and I can just I have I have the depth to be able to say like MHA you just sit on the bench uh, because I got you know whatever I I got Jalen McMillan like I just yeah uh, like so I just feel like if there's some positives that his last five healthy games that Marvin Harrison Jr. has played, he's gotten 29% target share. He's gotten 55% of the team's end zone targets. So at least he's, he's getting some of those end zone targets, right? They're just not looking. uh, They just haven't been in the end zone uh, the last two games very much uh, as well. And, uh, you know, there was a, there was a bad drop last, there was a bad drop last week, but I do remember that one game. That week two game, four for 130 and two touchdowns. So we know the upside is there. The upside is there for Marvin Harrison Jr. So again, reluctantly, I'm keeping it open. I get the matchup thing, but just nice win for Arizona against the Chargers last week. I, sort of, I feel like this is the similar to what like you're starting to hear kind of the squeaky wheel kind of stuff. Like, why isn't he getting more involved? Right. And like, I feel like they'll make a point. If they're going to beat Miami, must with win Tua for back, them too. For both that, those that guys, that division is tight. Like for sure, yeah, yeah for sure. Open. So I just he's too good, and now McBride back as well. That's opened up the offense a little bit more. So I'm I'm keeping the light open. I'm keeping it open for Marvin Harrison Jr. reluctantly, but yes. And maybe some good news in this matchup is with Tua back, the script of this game should yeah. have more offensive output than if it was yeah. God, if it was a Tyler Huntley game or any other. We Dolphins can win backup. this one. We can win this one, thirteen to ten. Exactly. Yeah. Right. They're, yeah. They should pretty much like how it was versus the Chargers. Just kind of. They like love a, playing that way. Yeah. The Chargers. Oh yeah. Connor this is a better does script. His thing. Yeah. Right, and Kyler's like, all right, I'm going to run for one, and yeah. like we're going to re- run it down, and we're going to kick a last second field goal, and we're going to win, yeah. like seventeen sixteen. That's not going to work against Tua with uh, with Hill and Waddle. You can't. Our next wide receiver, Devontae Smith, he's got the Bengals. 
He's got four catches in two games since he's been back, Matthew. It's just been a slow stretch for Devontae Smith. And last week, throw it out the window. The Eagles didn't need to really do anything through yeah. the air against the Giants. They threw it 15 times. They only attempted 15 passes. And so I, I get it that Devontae Smith only had two targets. But again, two targets on 15 pass attempts as well. I'm keeping it open on Devontae Smith. He's too talented. So is Jalen Hurts. So far this season, even despite last week, and the, actually the last two weeks, He's got a 25% target share on the year. He's had at least eight targets in three of the five games the Birds have played. And every game prior to last week, he's had at least 14 fantasy points. It's worth noting over the last month, uh, the Bengals are bottom 12 in terms of most fantasy points allowed to opposing wide receivers. So Devontae Smith, I think, is due for a big bounce back week. I'm keeping it open. He's my wide receiver 21 this week. Again, I just don't know that you have the luxury of benching him this week given all the injuries uh, that are happening in the in the world of wide receiver this week. And, and to be honest with you, Matthew, I, I would keep it open even without the injuries for Devontae Smith just because of how I believe this game could go. You could say, you know, oh, the Bengals' defense has gotten a little better over the past few weeks. Well, they played the Giants and they've played the Browns. So, <laughs> But when they played the Ravens and the Commanders, those games are back and forth. I actually think this game could go – similar to how the Bengals and Ravens went a couple weeks ago. You look at the over-under here, it's 47 and a half. That's the third highest of all the week eight games. So Devontae Smith didn't catch a lot of passes over the past couple weeks, but one of those went for a 45-yard touchdown, catch and run. So Devontae Smith obviously has that in his bag as well. So I'm going to keep it open on the Slim Reaper. The Bills and Keon Coleman have Seattle. Keon Coleman with his best uh, week of his career yeah, for so sure, far last sure. week. Now, Lawrence, the caveat with this is Mari Cooper is being slowly phased into this offense. A lot of Coleman's production came when Cooper was not on the field. Yeah, I'm very proud of Keon Coleman uh, for having that game, right? Uh, why? Why? Yeah, why He's are you uncle. personally proud? He's his uh, uncle. Yeah, <laughs> I'm his uncle. Um, I've always believed in him. You know, he he gets a thing for not being able to separate, which is, you know, it ain't a lie. You know what I'm saying? Right. But he's a That's good, a knock on me as well. He, right? <laughs> you find he, a way he, to overcome. He, yeah. he's, a, he's a good ball carrier. Obviously, we know he can go up and get the ball. But yeah. look, he plays 75% of the snaps. That's good too, right? It is. The thing about that is, so did Mac Hollins. Yep. So both of those guys – you know, will take a step down once Amari Cooper uh, gets more integrated into the offense. And just to see what Amari Cooper was able to do playing uh, the low percentage of snaps just lets you know that obviously it's going to be Amari Cooper and then it's going to be every other receiver get in where you could fit in. So, you know, Keon Coleman will have his – he'll have his games. He'll score some touchdowns here and there, but I don't know that the volume will be to the tune of seven targets per game. One, because I don't even think the Bills is trying to play football like that. And two, you just have it. you have a new wide receiver one. You still got Dalton Kincaid. You got Khalil Shakir, who Josh Allen trusts. So I'm going to close it out. I'm going to close it out this week for the young Keon Coleman. I agree with you, Lawrence. I'm also going to close it out. You hinted at this, uh, Connor. You talked about it. Like, the fact is, is that for as much production as Ken Coleman had last week, the four for 125, also should have had a touchdown, like, or had a chance that it got caught, overturned, uh, it bobbled a little bit. But all four of Ken Coleman's receptions came when Amari Cooper was off the field. Amari Cooper, again, just to put a number on it, only played 33% of the snaps last week, which makes sense. He had just gotten there a couple right. of days before. But the theory is, is that as Amari Cooper ramps up, he's going to play more and more snaps, Lawrence. This is what you were saying uh, as well. And so at best, I think the at best, Keon Coleman is the fourth passing option on this balanced Bills offense. Like, I think yeah. you would argue, obviously, you've got Amari Cooper and Dalton Kincaid. I would argue that Khalil Shakir in the slot is probably a more viable pass catcher in terms of more targets and more looks, yeah. more routes run than Keon Coleman. I get that he's out there a lot. He's going to be out there, right. but it's just like. Yeah, but like, so so yeah, maybe it's Matt Collins, maybe it's Keon Coleman on the other side. We don't know how the Bills are going to go, but this is a balanced offense. They like to run the ball. And then when Josh Allen is going back to throw, he's looking for, he's going to look for Cooper, Kincaid, Shakir, and I get, and maybe, maybe Coleman. But again, they, they also use Samuel a little bit. They use Matt Collins a little bit. It just, 
Dawson Knox every Ooh, once in a while shows up with a touchdown yeah. in the red yeah. zone. Yeah. Curtis Samuel. Like, so I just I'm closing it out. You saw it there on my ranks. He's my wide receiver 46 for me this week. If you're starting him, you're hoping he catches one long one. But I That's just the thing. I think last week was a little bit of a mirage if you didn't watch the game closely. Coleman's big play dependent. And honestly, coming yeah. out of college, his profile was a player that from a fantasy points perspective is big play dependent, touchdown dependent. So yeah. I'm in a dynasty league where somebody traded Saquon Barkley for Ken Coleman. Drove me up a wall. Any See. draft assets? Yeah, they tra- they traded a, a it's a it's a team that's a bottom dweller that is going to be a bottom dweller again. And so they traded Saquon Barkley and a third, what's going to be a low third for Saquon, uh, I'm sorry, for Ken Coleman and what will be a high first. So it's a team that's a title contender. And, and, and like on theory, it's not like a move I would make it's, it's not a move I would make. And I, I think the, the, the bottom dweller team should have basically said to the league, to the bunch of contenders, I'm I'm one of the contenders and I'm not the team that was able to get Saquon Barkley. So obviously I'm a little <laughs> bit of a bitter berry here. But uh, I, I think the, the bottom dwelling team should have said like, hey, contenders, Saquon's on the block. Who's interested? Right. You know, and I think that team would have gotten a better offer than Ken Coleman in a one. Right, and I mean, you know, you create right, a bit of war. Right so you could win. You could win two titles with Saquon in the next two years. A hundred percent, and it's just, it's a, it's a bottom dwelling team that has been bottom dwelling since the league has started, uh, for like five years, and doesn't seem to have a direction. This particular uh, manager traded. A, it's a super flex league, and traded a young quarterback for mm. Saquon last year. So you're like, we at the time the rest of the league was like, why are you trading a young quarterback? For Saquon, who's in a you're, terrible position when, at the who's time, who's in a terrible position at the time, and he's like he's a hurt running back, <laughs> and you're like, and you need to rebuild. You know what I mean? Like quarterbacks have much longer shelf life. Yes. Anyway, uh, anyway, I was gonna I say don't get me started. Brian, already Rock, started, Brian but, Thomas is some well, right. I, thank you. More I upside, mean, much more upside. I, I just dynasty wise, I think there's a lot of wide receivers, I, young wide receivers, I like better. I agree. Uh, than Keon Coleman, so it was a weird one. But just so you know, what's out there on those streets. <laughs> maybe uh, if you have Ken Coleman, we're closing it out in redraft. But if you have him in Dynasty, maybe you could get a uh, pretty penny for him. Our last player here, Pat Fryermuth against the Giants. Pat Fryermuth only has one game this season with double-digit fantasy points. The good news is, Lawrence, maybe with Russell Wilson under center, there's a little bit more here for Fryermuth, although how much? Nah, he had he had the catch of his life in that he game did. versus the Jets. And then, look, taking, taking his low, you know, volume out of it, uh, the Giants haven't allowed a touchdown to a tight end yet this season, and they allow four receptions and 35 yards per game to the tight end position. Then, you know, I talked about it earlier with Tracy, this game is over under 35. This is going to be another Najee Harris type of game, so I'm closing it out on Friar Me. He's had under 40 receiving yards in five or seven games. He has yet to see an end zone target this year. He's a tight end. He has yet to see an end zone target yeah. this year. Three straight games with a target share below 15%. You mentioned the low nature of this game and also that the Giants do. In fact, you know, there's a lot of issues with the Giants, but they do defend the tight end pretty well. Their defense overall is playing well. It's the yeah. offense that's a yeah. challenge uh, as well. So he's my tight end 20 this week. Darnell Washington's playing more snaps than I think we might have expected. They threw him the ball more than they did to Friar. I'm just saying. A little so, rollout. Yeah, they exactly. They get out his way so, when he uh, so uh, we love saying Muth, but um, we're going to also bench. I was trying to make it work, and it didn't oh, really. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it, was a, it was a bridge too far. Yeah, at least you let it go yeah. quickly. You they can cut that out. It's all good. <laughs> no, they're not going to cut it out. Let they're it ride. Leave it. I'm going to leave it. I look, forward to the, I look forward to the YouTube comments about that one. That one! Matthew, so you got you got to stay off the YouTube comments, man. Nah. Uh, I, like, I actually know, in all seriousness, the YouTube comments were much nicer uh, and well, much more expect. fun than I thought. It's actually a great audience on YouTube, actually. We're very appreciative of you guys. Here's Matthew's keep it open or close it out rankings recap here. Dak ends up being uh, a close, obviously, yes, in single quarterback leagues at QB19. If you're in something like the League of Assholes, totally different story. Jordan Mason, keep that one open. He's RB15, much better matchup on deck against the Cowboys. Tyrone Tracy Jr. is a close mm-hmm. for now. We just got to see how the Giants actually choose to use him and if that offense can get going at all. Don't expect it against the Steelers. Marvin Harrison Jr. was a close for Lawrence, but an open for Matthew. He's wide receiver 27. Devontae Smith, keep it open, wide receiver 21 in a game where scoring should be pretty high against the Bengals. Keon Coleman, close at wide receiver 46. Amari Cooper will play more snaps this week. Pat Farm with a close at tight end 20. There's just not the volume you need from him, even though the tight end landscape is brutal for
right now. Let's jump into the Roto World player news. For all your player news, go to NBCSports.com, and we start the day off here, guys, with the big one. As the Chiefs trade a fifth-round pick that could become a fourth-round pick eventually uh, for the Titans as the Titans unload DeAndre Hopkins. Matthew, the Chiefs really, really needed wide receiver help. They get a veteran after they lost Rasheed Rice for the season, and they've just been thin at pass catcher all year. They, they really have, and, and, you know, I think what's interesting here, massive upgrade for DeAndre Hopkins. Anytime you're going from, you know, what the Tennessee passing game has been so far this year uh, to Patrick Mahomes. Congratulations, D-Hop. Yes. D-Hop. Yeah. You're, you're living, you're living, you're living right yes. today, D-Hop. You drink for free, uh, One of my way. favorite players in the NFL. I've interviewed him a uh, number of times over the years. He's awesome. He's an awesome human being. If you know anything about his story and the story with his mom, yeah, it's, a, sure. it's a great story. He's an easy, easy guy to root for. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been a, a tough go of it in terms of some of the situations he's landed himself in from NFL uh, team standpoint. But I think he now gets to play with the best quarterback in the NFL and with no Rasheed Rice and we'll see how long Juju Smith-Schuster is out. Suddenly there are, seems to be there are targets available for DeAndre Hopkins. It'll take him a little while to – uh, to get up to speed, but one of the things that's uh, exciting to me about Hopkins here in this match, in this situation, is is that Mahomes is a quarterback that isn't worried about, not worried about anything, right? He's no. Patrick Mahomes. So my point is, is that with a with a younger, more inexperienced quarterback, you know, they don't see Hopkins open. That's never been Hopkins' game. He never, he's never a guy that's going to get massive separation. Hopkins chance. is a guy who's just throw the ball somewhere near him and he's coming down with it yep. because he's mm-hmm. just got this unbelievable catch radius. He, you know, he's as good a 50-50 ball winner as there is in the NFL. And so Mahomes would be like, F it. Go get it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he doesn't mind throwing those kind of balls. So uh, having a uh, play caller like Andy Reid as well, they will design some stuff for him. Uh, look, I mean, you think about their target share. Rasheed Rice had a 25% target share. Kelsey, 21%. Xavier Worthy at 17%. Hopefully this opens up some more stuff for Xavier Worthy as well. We don't know when Juju's coming back. We just know he's not playing this week. Um, all that said, it's still the Chiefs. It's going to take him time to get acclimated. It's going to take him time to um, – and they still throw the ball all over the place. Noah they Gray. Still do, they still do right. They shovel passes yeah. to Noah Gray and – end around some Michael Hardman when they get close and they, they still do weird crap in the in the red zone so um, hopefully this is a, a a significant red zone target for Mahomes but I think he's what I tweeted out earlier was that I think he's on the wide receiver three radar yeah. which means I'm not starting him as I don't think he's a wide receiver three this week but I think he's yeah. on that radar of I think that's where I think I mean best case scenario is anything's possible with Mahomes right but best case scenario just given what we've seen I think he's somewhere in that 20 to 30 range among yeah. wide receivers yeah, he, once he gets uh, up to speed. He, he a nice little flex play uh, once he get going after a couple of weeks. And you mentioned Xavier Worthy. Maybe they could get to a position where they could take some more of those deep shots. They took one with him. Patrick Mahomes overthrew him a little bit. But as weird as that game look against the 49ers, man, they put up 29, 28 points on right. the road. It, it's not some – this ain't the Jaguars defense we play here. They went to play the Niners and put up 28 points. So the stats don't look pretty, but maybe getting DeAndre Hopkins in there could make things a little more, you know, just get things going. He's a he's a chain mover. That's what he's known for, you know. So maybe that's what they need. And if Juju could do what he did a couple weeks ago. With the underneath stuff. All the sides Hopkins should, should be able eye. to have some nice games with him. Yeah, yeah. for sure, because and it, it allows them then to just you know pick their spots with Kelsey, Connor to the eye test. I, I, you know, people look at the numbers, and obviously the numbers have not been great for DeAndre Hopkins. He started off, he was hurt in the preseason, he was slow, didn't play a ton of snaps in the first two weeks of the season, um, and then obviously just it's just been a it's been a tough go of it for the Titans offense for the last month or so. Uh, have you seen that – does it look like Hopkins has lost a step to you at all? Like, I think it was injury-related. He came into the season, it sounded like maybe MCL-related, and that's something that's not going to affect him the whole season. It just takes a couple of weeks for you to really clear up and get your legs back under you. But they can't throw the ball, and they don't want to throw the ball at Tennessee. And yeah. I think we'll see a revitalized Hopkins in this Kansas City offense, especially mm-hmm. if they balance the usage. We know how good he is on the outside, but if he gets the, used the way Rasheed Rice was being used yeah. half the time, not all the time, half the time, where he just sits underneath on those shallow crossers and slants, Hopkins can catch six to seven passes a game, which he goes from fantasy wasteland to at least relevant. A thousand like a, percent. A, a wide receiver three with some upside and touchdown oh, sure. upside. I was trying to trade for him. 
yeah. from you a couple weeks ago. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I had a feeling there was a, a prayer he can get moved, so I wouldn't. I gave you <laughs> Romeo Dobbs, though, which is working yeah, out great. He, he's been yeah. keeping yeah. me afloat. Yeah. yeah. So, I was yeah. just like, I immediately was like, when I saw the trade, I immediately went to the to, uh, to Yahoo. <laughs> and was like, who has Hopkins in the League of Assholes? You're playing him. And, of course, <laughs> it's the guy I'm playing this week. And yeah. just watch them, just like a Josh Allen with Amari Cooper, watch them, hey, let's get Hopkins. Let's, let's, let's get Let's yeah. get yeah. Hopkins a touchdown. It's yeah. happening. Or he two. He's going to moss somebody. Or, yeah, a thousand percent. I mean, listen, <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> Stupid Steven got, you know, two from Rashad Bateman. Yeah. Wait yes. for the Cedric Tillman game this week. Oh, it's coming. I saw that you – he out – by the way, this one, <laughs> this one, this one outbid me for Cedric Tillman by he, – he looked at what my max bid was, and he bid one more dollar, which, by the way, I mean – Not at all year. They're like, you know, hashtag respect, though. You, you know, you hey, hashtag respect, respect, though. though. Like, like, I was like <laughs> – I was like cinema, I like looked at it, and I'm like, Connor, you mother – and then I was just like, well, you know – Respect the game though. is the game. The game is the I'm game. I'm the ugliest four and three you will I, ever I, see. A thousand percent. The, the game is the game. Four and three, fly. nonetheless. Yeah, yeah. respect though. <laughs> yep. Respect though. Uh, some more wide receiver news. The Rams are open to trading Cooper Cup. Yep. Obviously, this would have been insane if he ended up with Kansas City. Kansas City didn't want to pay that kind of price. The Rams are looking for it. Sounds like around a second round pick. I might even pay some salary here to get that done. Diana Rossini has been all over the trade rumors on Cup right now. Matthew, we don't know when Cup is going to return or if he is going to return for the Rams. The next time we see him could be in a different uniform. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Like, if you're the Rams, do you try to keep him in bubble wrap because you want to trade him? Yes. Or do you want – or do you throw him out there because you're, hey, like, hey, we want to show you just – when this guy's out there, he's as good as there is in yeah. the NFL. This is why we're asking a second-round pick for this guy and willing to pay some of the salary uh, as well. I sort of think he plays. I think they okay. want – because – because he's been injured, I think teams are going to want to see him healthy. I think it doesn't sound like the trade market is heated up, especially with Hop the Chiefs now off the market. Like, we've got somebody. So, um, so we'll see. Uh, two things that are important to note here. The Rams have activated the 21-day practice window for Puka Nakua. And I think it's worth it if you were sitting there, you're like, ah, boy, Jordan Whittington did nothing last week. And I've been – I keep hoping that, you know, Tutu Atwell is going to do something to Marcus Robinson. Like, it's worth hanging on to those guys for at least another week or two to see if Cup does get moved because certainly – uh, we saw what Nakua did when Cup was out last year. He went nuclear. And uh, there should be, you know, massive target share available if Cup get, gets moved. Uh, so we sort of just wait and see. There's no real fantasy analysis. Last thing is we just to wrap up all these trades. Um, I don't know that there's any big takeaway on the Tennessee side of the ball for DeAndre Hopkins. You know what I mean? Like, Traylon Burks is on, on IR, you know, so you've got, like, you got Calvin Ridley, Tyler Boyd. Nobody's doing anything got anyway. You Nick Westbrook, Aquino. Like, I, you know, I don't know that he there's any. He got a touchdown this year. He did. I think he's got two, actually. But it just, maybe maybe my guy Chig Conquo gets a few more looks. But just the passing game is such a disaster right now for Tennessee. I don't know that there's anyone where you go. I mean, Calvin Ridley's still getting seven to nine targets a game. He hadn't done, done anything it's, with him. It's, so it's. The I, can't I, makers of wide receivers. Thousand percent. Just this, this, empty this, volume. This, this was going to happen because you saw Amon Ross St. Brown got back on track versus the Vikings from the slot. You got Cooper Cup, slot guy. Here's my prediction. He plays. He has a big game. The over under in this game Thursday is 48, right? He plays, has a good game. And then he's playing for the Bucks on Sunday. Oh. Then Ooh. he's playing. So he's going to have two. He's going to give you double fantasy points. He's going to play for the Rams and the Buccaneers. That would be amazing. I don't Where think that's, that's – That's I don't like think they, some, I that's don't think they NFL. can, right? I don't no, think the NFL no, allows you to no. play NBA's two NFL. has got to have something okay. about that. Now, I don't um, think that's allowed. I, I know one year Emmanuel Sanders played an extra game because he got traded. He had no bye week. He had no bye week, so he played an extra game. But this right here – it's that just, would be amazing if that actually happened. It's just pretty cool to think, think about. It. Like, imagine going out one night, getting eight for 78, a touchdown. Two days later, you come out, do it again for the Bucks. <laughs> like, that would be It would be a great story. But I do think there's some rule that you can yeah, only play one NFL game. Oh, but anyway, I'm not a rules expert. I only play one on TV. Speaking of those Bucks, as we sit here and we're waiting on more and more news with their wide receiver situation, we did hear from Todd Bowles on the status of Mike Evans who's expected to miss multiple weeks. Take a listen. To He's Bowles. always a firecracker, so let, this will be fun. Caffeinated Todd Balls. At this point, we're probably expecting after the bye week. Uh, he tweaked it pretty good when he fell on it on that play. And yeah. it's it's moderate, but it is, 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 it's hurting pretty good right now. So we'll probably say after the bye week, hopefully. It's, it's the same hamstring, but it's in a different spot than it was before. And... It's pretty sore. I don't know what the significance of that is either, but he's going to miss a couple weeks. 
Firecracker Todd Bowles, as Matthew said. Just yeah. perfection there. So big news there. We got more injuries we're tracking as Mike Evans is expected to miss multiple weeks. Jaden Daniels is dealing with that rib injury. Uh, his status is heading towards in doubt against it's, the Bears. It's trending the wrong way. Bears they want to be favor- careful. With Bears him. are favored in this game. The game's in Washington, and yet the Bears are two-point favorites. That should tell um, you a lot. If yeah. Jaden Daniels is playing in that game, I think that's a pick, pick em em or point and a half or towards get, Commanders. Exactly. Yeah, I think so. Chris Olave still dealing with the concussion there. DK Metcalf will have more on his status with that uh, knee injury as we get our practice reports throughout the week here. Debo Samuel with illness. We talked about that. He had pneumonia. Uh, scary situation. Jacoby Myers with the ankle. Jonathan Taylor with the ankle, but he's trending the right way. David Montgomery with the knee injury. George Kittle with the foot injury. TJ Hawkinson working his way back. We'll keep an eye on his status if he makes his return. Yeah, I, I think I don't think he's 100% roster. I mean, it's like somewhere in the 90s, you know, but it's just it, – we're seeing if somebody somebody might have got sick of so, holding him. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, uh, and especially in leagues without IR spots, and you just you know those those bench spots. Yeah, so and some cool. other news we yeah. mentioned this earlier. Jameis Winston is expected to start Sunday against the Ravens. Lawrence, I, well, yeah, this He's is bet. this He's is bet. good rational coaching. If you are somehow rostering any Browns receiver, and I I am in multiple leagues with Cedric Tillman now, the Ravens' pass defense hasn't been good this year. The Browns should be losing this game. And we're in a two-quarterback league. Jameis Winston was a commodity. Sure, he went he, for he went for big money in our uh, in our auction. He he brings honestly, he'll be the best quarterback that the Browns have seen this year. Right. And he makes he makes Cedric Tillman very relevant. I know Cedric Tillman's going to go off against me this week because you're going to yeah. start him against me. I know that's <laughs> that would make happen. my year. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think this is suddenly it's very exciting for Njoku and uh, and Tillman, right. and maybe he can breathe some life into into Jerry Judy. But this was – I'm glad to see rational coaching taking over in uh, in Cleveland. And Jameis Winston is on the – is, you know, a viable number two quarterback. How about – You know, a top 20 quarterback the rest of the way, viable in super flex and two quarterback leagues, and a borderline QB1 in the right matchup. How about this, Matthew? Just the threat of him being able to throw the ball could help Nick Chubb in the second half of the season. thousand percent. thousand so, percent. You, you can't Sean play Sean Watson up. couldn't do anything through the air. It was all just it sell was out worst, against the run. A hundred percent. So yeah. we'll keep an eye I on I mean, that I one. still think Jameis Winston is starting quarterback this league in this league. Yeah, I think we'll get to see why now. I agree. All right. I agree. It's gonna be fun. It's always fun when Jameis is out there. Oh yeah, anything could happen. Yeah. <laughs> As we mentioned earlier, uh, because we are true sickos and we are very excited about the NBA coming to NBC. The League of Assholes is now running a fantasy basketball league, and the, we are the League of Loopholes for the <laughs> The Who? The hoop holes. Oh, oh, oh. I, I was trying to, like, I thought, I was I trying to make thought, something I work. Said, I and... thought you said group holes. No, that would be like, different. Huh? That's so it. so with our league, league that includes, league. of course, me, Matthew, Lawrence, and Jay, Roto, Pat, Denny, producer yeah. Damien, producer Steven, producer Adam, and backup producer Pete, for the first time. We have a lot of producers on the show. We, we, yes, it takes a lot. Our army, as Well, no say. one wants to do it full time is what happens. And so we just, like, people like, oh, it's, it's my – it's my day. My day. <laughs> yeah. I have Roll to out of bed. Right, exactly. Throw on sweats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, let's get this done. We are revealing our fantasy hoops draft order. Let's right, take a look. Go. I think we have a duck race. Duck race. So this is, with this our is names. The, there you go. This is like duckrace.com or something like that. You see it there. We haven't seen this um, yet. Yeah, it, oh, it, it feels like when they recorded this, they might have wanted to do full screen or something like that because it's not really <laughs> it, coming it, this through. This is a race. Adam's How come in the I'm lead. not winning? Now Jay, Jay is taking the Let's lead. Let's go. Here we go. Uh, here goes oh, Lawrence. 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 I have the sixth pick. I'm very happy about that. I want to be in the middle, not on the end of any runs. Rotopad is seventh. Uh, Denny, the, uh, the mainstream media does not want you to know that Denny is picking eighth. Producer da- uh, Damien is picking ninth. And Connor, you are at the end on the wraparound at pick 10. I could be picking first, second, or third. It doesn't matter. We're just I gonna, mean, yeah. look, 10 man lead, 10th spot is pretty decent. Yeah, you're fine. Double you're up. on the clock. Who's yeah. it going to be? Uh, well, Bronny well, James? Well, well, welcome to the team, uh, Victor Webinyama. Oh, uh, okay. Maybe Jokic, but it's Mikhail, out of them. Mikhail too. Bridges wasn't in consideration. No, no, that no, new no, shot? no, no. We ain't doing none of that. It's going to be out of those two guys. Maybe I'll go. What about Dominique? It, it could be a hawk. It could be Trey Young. Uh, it could be Trey Young. I could go Homer. Yeah, you should. You should as well. All right. Uh, last thing here before we head, head to break real quickly. I know what you guys are thinking. You guys are sitting there and you're looking at my shirt. You're looking at this sweet shirt at home. It says, uh, it says uh, Connecticut Gymnastics 2024 State Champion. And I know you're sitting here going, 
Barry, that's a really cool shirt. I would like to buy that shirt. Where can you buy the shirt? And here's the answer. You can't. You can't <laughs> buy this shirt. You know how you get this shirt? You gotta you win. Become a, you gotta become a state champion in the state of Connecticut or be the parent of one. This is my daughter, yeah. Brooke. Congratulations. State go. Champion. Yeah. Let's go. She, yes, this sir. past week, this past weekend, she was honored at the award ceremony. I wasn't able to be there, unfortunately. I was doing fantasy football pregame, but she uh, she got the award. There she is, uh, my beautiful daughter. She turns 13 on Friday. I'm going to be the father of teenagers. Her and her sister Samantha turn uh, 13 on Friday, but um, incredibly proud of her. She put in a ton of work as well, and uh, so I wish I could have been there, but I want to just give her a quick shout out as well. Uh, my daughter, state champion. State and champion. Congrats. Congrats. Before her hey, teenage year. Right. So she, they about to be 13. Are we on to the Olympics 2028? Oh no. no. Are we exactly. out there? She's ex, she's, she's ex, uh, you know, anyway, I am gonna get, I was going to get into nerd gymnastics talk. No one cares about that. But anyway, I'm just really proud of her. Great job, so, Brooke. Uh, yes. Anyway, great, great job, Brooke. So proud of you. Two storied franchises renew their rivalry on Sunday night. Find out if Dak Prescott and the Cowboys can get back on track after their bye week when they face off against Brock Purdy and the 49ers. Coverage of the matchup starts at 7 p.m. Eastern on NBC and Peacock. We're taking our first break. When we're back, we're talking Jags backfield and much more. Stay with us. Center center. Digs me the back. Has the snap, hands it off with his left hand. Bigsby up the middle, powering his way, and he's in for another touchdown. Take Bigsby from four yards out, and it's an exclamation point at Wembley. Who's eating good? Served by Applebee's, as you heard. Tank Bigsby, the radio call of him rumbling into the end zone. He's got the Packers this week, Matthew. Tank Bigsby comes in as RB what for you? 35. Okay. The challenge, I think Tank Bigsby is awesome. I think he's a really good running back. Here's the concern. He has a less than 1% target share this year. He is just not involved in the passing game at all. Even with Travis Etienne out last week, it was Dearness Johnson, Lawrence. As you mentioned, you got double-digit fantasy points out of him. I and so going against the Packers, you have to assume they're going to be a negative game script here, given how well the Packers offense is rolling, how poorly the Jacksonville Jaguars defense as well. And so uh, the problem here with Bigsby is not only the fact that they're going to be big underdogs to, uh, to, the, to the Packers in this one is right. Right now, they're four and a half point dogs, and I bet that line moves as we continue to get closer to Sunday. But the next four games, they're at Philadelphia, home to Minnesota, at Detroit. So is Tank Bigsby kind of a sell high? Because again, if they're going to be a negative game script for the next month, it's going to be either Travis Etienne or Dearness Johnson, who's the passing down. He's Bigsby's played on 17% of pass plays this year, just 17%. Ooh, and, and even when he's out there, they're not throwing him the ball. So the hope with Bigsby is that the Jaguars can keep it close enough that they're running Bigsby. And if they get in close, they use him at the goal line. So you, you need Bigsby to, I think what you're going to need in these games where they should be losing you're going to need Bigsby to fall into the end zone, which is certainly possible. He's really good around the goal line, but I just, you know, he's a touchdown dependent flex running back is what he is. And so going up against uh, the Green Bay Packers who, you know, have a, you know, a decent, not an amazing, but a right. decent run defense, like they're middle of the pack. Yes. He's my running back 35 this week. George Pickens, he's got the Giants this week after he ate good against the Jets, looking to continue that streak against New York teams. Lawrence, how much does Pickens' value change with Russell Wilson under center? Um, to be honest, not that much, if anything, right? Um, if you could just throw the ball up and you hope that he comes down with it, that's pretty much what his fantasy value's been this season. In four separate games, that Russell Wilson did not play. He has catches of 40, 27, 31, 38. So he usually gets that one big catch per game. Like he had 111 yards with Russell Wilson, but he's got a game this season where he's had 113 with Justin Fields. Now, I think the small difference comes on that, that goal line end zone touchdown catch that he got. That was a nice touch by Russell Wilson. I think that's where you give the slight edge there. Um, but other than that, like, are you going to have, you know, a ball bouncing off the DB's back or in him juggling to get an extra 10 yards or him coming back to a duck to catch it? You know, it's just, it's, if he could, if you could get him the ball in his area, that's his fantasy value right now. Yeah. So a little bit difference, but not really, because they still want to run the ball. And some of those 
play big plays were against backup corners. So. Backup corners. I think the Giants secondary is great, but just in terms of how sustainable this is. Yeah, so, yeah, no, I don't think it's like we're not moving George Pickens up into a top 15 receiver because Russell Wilson is in there. It's not, nah. Are, he still takes too many plays off. Yeah, and the snap count going down that, the week before. That, that's probably the biggest thing. That's probably the biggest thing. Our last player here, Matthew, Kyle Pitts. He's got three straight games with 10-plus points. Does he finally have a fantasy floor? I mean, that's the weird thing is that we thought with Pitts, he's like more of this boom-bust guy, but very quietly he's become a floor tight end. Three straight games with double-digit fantasy points, the first time since weeks 14 through 16 of 2021. He's had at least seven receptions in two of those games, um, and he's actually got a career low average depth of target of 7.8 so again like he's getting these easier catches he's getting these you know this quicker stuff which is keeping his floor high maybe it's limiting his upside somewhat but Ray Ray McLeod has come back to earth a little bit Darnell Mooney hasn't been as hot as we've seen him previously in the season obviously Detective Drake London friend of the show is going to get his but Mm -hmm. yes suddenly Kyle Pitt I am a tight end nine this week, and he's become kind of this low end tight end one where he was drafted. Kind of a nice floor play that seems to be involved on some level every week of the season. This Saturday night, number three, Penn State continues their quest for a national title as they travel to Camp Randall for a showdown with Wisconsin. Coverage of the battle starts at 7 p.m. Eastern on NBC and Peacock. We're taking our last break still ahead. Last call. Will anyone be brave enough to bet a seven plus point underdog this week? We'll tell you right after this. DraftKings Sportsbook is the number one place to bet touchdowns, and new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Down the app and use promo code Barry when you sign up. DraftKings Sportsbook, the crown, crown is, is yours. yours. <laughs> it's yours. It's Time for yours. last call. Let's take a look at some early lines courtesy of DraftKings. We're just off the rails at this point. <laughs> Lawrence, what do you like this point of the week? I it like is early, the, uh, early. I, I like the Eagles' money line right we'll call here. Call you money line Jackson I, for nothing. I, that's right. And, and I'm not that I'm you no know, all the way convinced about the Eagles, but I ain't all the way convinced about the Bengals either. They didn't look great against the Browns. They struggled. So both teams struggle. I think the Eagles just have more talent on their roster to gut it out right now. Matthew, what about you? Yeah, I, I, I'm going to take the Browns plus eight and a half. Listen. Marlon Humphrey's not going to play for the Ravens. Jameis, I think, gives them a boost. Games in Cleveland, division rival. Yep. Backdoor cover for the Browns. Yeah. I got the Packers minus four and a half at Jacksonville. Listen, 90% of the tickets are on this Packers spread. And though they tell you to fade the public, this time I think we're all right. I would agree with you. Hey, it's closing time. That music means you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Once again, congratulations to Brooke. Congratulations to DeAndre Hopkins yeah, for Lawrence and Connor and the entire NBA League of Assholes. I am merely Matthew Berry. We will see you tomorrow. Peace out. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and RotorWorld.com, and I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched, or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay, I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.